the Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y dot com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fidus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. Are you looking for beer, wings, and swings in Lake Forest? Well, check out Duffer's Pub and their state-of-the-art golf simulators. This primo setup is the perfect place for your next corporate event. Yes, let your boss win. And of course, all the games will be on the TV and you'll never go hungry because the za and wings are scrumptious. Go to Duffer's Pub on Western Avenue now. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. Otto, John C., Helen, and Herrick. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Pete. How you doing there? Just making friends wherever I go. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> uh, I'm on the road in Denver. Uh, I got to leave at, uh, on, on time today because uh, I promised the wife I'd take her out for a nice brunch. Uh, oh, we drove... absolutely. Where, where, where in Colorado? Uh, Denver. We drove from... Oh, actual uh, Denver. Okay. Yeah, beautiful Lake Forest uh, to uh, uh, Denver. 1,020 miles yesterday. So it was a long, long haul. We're going to spend the day here today. Uh, we have a niece here, so we're visiting uh, with her. Uh, see a little bit of Denver, and then tomorrow morning we make the second half trip uh, from Denver to uh, beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Make sure you stop by the Celestial Tea Factory, the Coors Brewery. Ooh, okay. Well, actually, we're planning, yes, we are planning on going to, uh, what's the name of the place? The, the Lobby. Going to a restaurant called The Lobby. Absolutely. Uh, we have a forest connection. Uh, the um, uh, the owner is uh, uh, Meg Walla. I forgot what her married name is, but uh, uh, formerly Walla. Uh, Walla. 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 There's there's Joe Weiss. Great okay, okay, okay boys. Rick's Start. from Denver. Joe Joe and I are in Lake Forest. I just came back from God's country, Lake of the Ozarks, land of American flags and Trump flags. You know, I've never been down. I've never been to the Ozarks. I would like to. I'd like to visit. Mm-hmm. They do a lot. They deal a lot of drugs there. That's when I got out of the show. Uh, actually, they filmed a lot of it in Atlanta, which makes sense. More shoreline Lake of the Ozarks than the state of California. Hmm. Just letting you know that's, that's a lot letting you know so here i am back in uh, lake forest we've had a few things going on i got a page full of notes here uh the the bonfire thing when you guys posted all that was yeah. that from like last year or something or that, no, that was uh, this uh that was from sunday okay last sunday. yeah no we were there uh the um, uh they had the Parachute, which is always kind of the highlight to me of the uh, of the whole thing. We brought with our grandkids this time. We had, I have our grandkid and our friend Cindy uh, Davidson was with us um, with her grandson, uh, both seven year olds. Uh, and I'll tell you, when you're a seven year old, uh, you know the parachutes are great. The bonfire is even better. <laughs> they even they brought out this, they did something different this year. They brought out corn. There was lots and lots of ears of dried corn that all the kids were throwing uh, ears of corn into the fire. I didn't see any popcorn afterwards, though. I, I was looking for that. Yeah, it's just, just like just like a microwave when you leave it in too long. 
<laughs> Joe, think, how about you, yeah. man? Where you you had the popular joint, huh? Yeah, well, we had the cheap seats. We had the like the rooftop at Waveland Avenue. Yep, yep. Uh, for the right Cubs across, game. Right uh, yeah, right across the street there. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it, it's it's a great event. I was a little nervous about that first parachutist. They had three parachutists come in. That first guy. Yeah, everyone cool. in the crowd was like, "Uh oh!" I thought yeah. for a moment we were going to have a, a, a Chicago breaking news story uh, yeah. there with him <laughs> crashing in, but he he was coming in hot, literally. He was, yeah, sure. <laughs> but he, a year he ago, made it, he, he made right it in. I mean, I think the I, I think they get I got a haircut on from one of them. They were they were <laughs> right over my head. Uh, this time, actually, they yeah, they did they came in low. And they kind of skidded along the ground there for a little bit, came to a stop. Uh, it was pretty exciting. You know, these guys are ask, pros. I don't know where they're from, ask, what they're. They're always asked, you know, does the bonfire start first or the parachutist first? You know, I think, you know, very wisely, we do the parachutist first and then light the bonfire. You know, lighting the bonfire and then having the parachutists could lead to some bad results. I was, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm worried they might hit my house. I don't know. <laughs> No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I remember a couple of years ago uh, at the Chicago Air and Water Show, uh, there was an army parachutist, uh, and these are yeah. highly trained guys, uh, landed on the edge of a skyscraper, a tall apartment building, right on Lakeshore Drive, uh, and fell off uh, to his death. Uh, it was a real tragedy. I remember that. Yeah, sometimes these things, uh, you know, there is some risk involved in these, uh, even for highly trained uh, professionals like them. That would be the end of bagpipes and bonfire, then. Uh, yeah, that would be. Uh, and the other hand, uh, the, the, by the way, the other question we get a lot is uh, under their kilts because they wear kilts for this. Uh, the uh, uh, they do wear pants uh, under the kilts. I, I can assure you, <laughs> all of the all of the women ask about that. One, but uh, yeah, they're always <laughs> wearing pants. You know, I my my big concern though was cultural appropriation. I mean, you know, here we have all this Scottish themed stuff going on in uh, in Lake Forest uh, for bagpipes and bonfires. Uh, don't the Scottish people get upset that we are culturally appropriating <laughs> uh, all of their you know, the, the, the bagpipes, the you know, the whole show? I mean, what, what where, where's the protest? I mean, you know, does the uh, Scottish uh, you know there's no Scottish embassy? Uh, perhaps that's why they uh, they are protesting. But I well, Scott, I was going to say Scotland is a part of the United Kingdom. But yeah, yeah you're right. It's a good and I think they you the, the whole Scottish thing I'm told is because the original settlers here were Scottish, is what someone had told me. The first, you know the pres first pres church and all that. Um, yeah, so my friend it goes back. Uh, Cor Corlo, who was uh, who was uh, very uh, keen on these things, uh, you know, always uh, does want to point that out. Um, you know, but I, I don't know why he's not upset that uh, you know all of these other people are appropriating Scottish uh, things like uh, the, the, the where they throw the telephone pole up in the air. Uh, you know, I mean that's a that's a Scottish sport. You know, <laughs> these people think that baseball is weird. You know, let's throw a telephone pole up in the air, boys. Next on the list here, just a couple questions. Uh, quite a bit of busloads from Texas coming into town. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's the only it's the only time people come from Texas to Illinois as opposed to moving from Illinois to Texas. Yeah, these are these are the only people moving from Texas. Yeah, keep the population. <laughs> so, so well, Chris has managed to find a way to uh, reverse uh, reverse immigration now. Uh, you know, all the people leaving, about one hundred fifty thousand people left Illinois over the last uh, year and a half, uh, according to the census, and uh, you know now we're bringing them in from Venezuela. And keep the uh, electoral vote count the same in the next census. So do you see uh, Julie Morrison? Uh, do you see Ju Julie Morrison out there uh, welcoming them off the the buses uh, to to come on her property and hang out, or no? Well, I don't think I don't think they've been bused to uh, Lake Forest or any community on the in in Senator Morris's district. But oh no, they're going to take the train here. Why are are they? they? Okay. I mean, like, why isn't the Highland Park a sanctuary city? I mean, come on. Well, I'm just wondering if Julie Morrison is going to go out there and when they, because look, Texas shipped them to Chicago. Chicago is going to give them a train ticket and send them out here. Yeah, right. How was it they handled all the immigrants that came through this country over the years, you know, Ellis Island and all that? And we didn't have the drama that we're having now on that. I, I don't get it. But, yeah, very, very different. 
the time. But I'll tell you, one of the reasons was when they came through Ellis Island, they're coming in legally. Uh, that was legal immigration. Oh. Uh, in 19, uh, beginning in 1914, the beginning of World War I, uh, the United States placed limits on immigration uh, and has quotas in terms of which country, how many people from each country, other country, can immigrate to the United States at any one time. Uh, that, however, has been cast to the winds uh, under the guise of, uh, of asylum, uh, that people are desperate uh, to avoid tyranny in their home countries uh, and therefore have to come here and we have to take them in. Uh, you know, for example, at the end of the Afghan war about a year or two ago, uh, many Afghans uh, who worked for the uh, United States uh, allied government in Afghanistan uh, came here when the Taliban take over. That's asylum. That's perfectly legitimate, normal use of asylum. Uh, this current flood of, uh, of immigrants is simply uh, a sham asylum uh, and it's both destroying the concept of asylum as well as uh, flooding the country with people who are uh, not well equipped to take jobs uh, in the modern in the modern world well back then it was a federal process you had a system in place to process all this these people coming in what's wrong with just processing them and i mean this is going to sound you know a little far right but why can't we have that them... never this before? <laughs> right. Well, why why can't we have them go to areas where we need that labor? You know, set you know, set up some type of system there where they can work in, you know, California and you know, I don't want to say the fields or whatever, but put them in there and process them and you know, give them a way to work out. And if they don't work, then then send them back. Joe, your response. Uh, the Democrats um, thought they could ride on the "if you want to control borders, you're a bigot" campaign, and I think a I think that that is not uh, playing itself out the way the Democrats thought. I mean, there were people that used some over-the-top language and anti-Mexican or anti-Hispanic language, and and shame on that. Uh, but. Uh, the reality is that um, there needs to be a process and there needs to be better control of the border. We're the only country in the world that um, pretty much has a has the open border uh, that, Me that Mexican had. Mexicans and Hispanics. They're hard workers. You know, they, they, they know how to work. Why can't we harness that and put it in a system where they can they're willing if they're willing to trek over that damn desert they're willing no. to, to go out and work and yeah no i agree I, I i i think everybody wants to work and i think a lot of people do come here wanting to work but um the skills uh, to really contribute uh to the current american economy i uh, you know we'll, we're gonna find out but i will tell you you know when if and when uh if biden loses this next election uh his complete failure to defend the southern border uh, and just ignore the problem uh, is going to be listed as one of the number one reasons, uh, a but-for cause in terms of why he lost. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm stunned to see the President of the United States simply ignoring a problem, uh, uh, an immigration problem of this magnitude. Because he's trying to fall back on the playbook of if you want to control the border, you're a racist or you're uh, yeah, yeah. anti well, whatever and and people aren't, aren't aren't falling for that anymore because we're not we're we're not anti uh, no. uh, immigrant we're not anti we are a nation of immigrants but there's a process and you need to have have something in place but that's that's bigger than Lake Forest well, uh, okay, that's okay. bigger than the state of Illinois but, okay, you know Brandon oh, hold Mayor, on we keep talking Brandon about the Johnson problem and, why can't that be a solution will the union get yeah that? Well, the well, I'm just saying with the system that's in place, the Democrats own all the unions, right? Pretty much, except for, so, police, except for the police union. Yep. Okay, so well, hope so you have these people coming in, and you can have the unions beefing. Oh my God, there's less jobs for our people. But those that people was that like, has been it. That has yeah. been a source of contention over the years, Pete, between about unions and immigration within the Democratic Party. Um, which drove a lot of a lot of trades union members uh, away from the Democratic. So you can see the tension uh, in the city of Chicago uh, between local residents who are quite poor uh, and these new immigrants coming in. 
uh, that the new immigrants are getting subsidized by the government, uh, while the longtime residents of Englewood uh, and many all of Austin and many of the neighborhoods of the city uh, are sitting there going like, well, what about us? I mean, why don't we get some help? Well, the, that system is in place right now. Just take a pickup truck and drove by, drive by Home Depot, and what do you see? You got a line of people that it will hop in the back of the pickup truck for day work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's happening now. It's just all underground. Why can't we harness it? And I'm guessing it's the unions and it's the Democrats. It's a federal issue. Well, and then there's some Republicans that don't want, on the extreme end of the Republican Party, there's some Republicans that don't want you to do that. They want you to send them all back yeah. uh, to Mexico or whatever country. A lot, a lot of them are not actually from Mexico. They're coming from countries in Central and South America and, and going through Mexico to get here. But, but when you um, send them so, back... We saw, we saw, we've never been able to have comprehensive we've never been able to have comprehensive immigration reform because you have extremes in both parties that don't want it to happen for political reasons. Let's they so want to prey upon that chaos. It. Hold on, simplify it. So why are we why would we want to send these people back? Does that mean that we think they're less valuable than if they're here? We, we I don't think that, but there are people that do. Well, but that's people what I'm saying. don't want them here. Okay, I mean, unfortunately, why? and that's and that's the extreme of the that's the extreme end, the the, the hard right end of of the Republican Party, and I, like I said, I think there are people that thrive on chaos politically. Um, you know, the Cold War. There were people. There's a lot of people that think that uh, uh, the worst thing that happened to the Republican Party was the end of the Cold War because they didn't have uh, the Soviets to pick on anymore and use. But and I don't know if that's really true, but. I'm just saying there there are there are people in the process, extremes in both parties that that would rather argue than find solutions. And that's why I think we need to go. I'm a centrist. Um, and I think, you know, I think Jim Karras is a centrist. Um, and I think you need somebody that's willing to to set aside all the rhetoric, roll up their sleeves and find issues. The reason Lake Forest has run so well is people do set aside rhetoric and run. They solved immigration in the 1980s. Uh, Reagan and um, uh, uh, and um, uh, oh God, uh, O'Neill, uh, O'Neill, Tip O'Neill uh, made a deal, uh, and that supposedly solved immigration at the time. I remember in Miami well. and Cuba, uh, and, it, and it, you know, it, it really didn't solve it because they didn't do anything to shut off uh, the border. The, the faucet continued to flow. the The idea that the United States is now going to, in, by the far right in this country. Uh, that we are going to round up all of these ill, uh, undocumented workers, whatever you want to call people, uh, who are not here, uh, that we are going to round them all up, put them in camps, uh, and then somehow truck or bus them uh, back to Mexico or wherever, uh, it would be horrific. I mean, think about how, how horrible the optics would be on that. Uh, think about how really expensive that would be to do from a business standpoint. Yeah, how, why would we? Well, how, also, how, you know, government isn't good at banning things. It's easy to pass laws; it's hard to enforce them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. whether See, it's whether it's, it's abortion, it's whether it's law. guns, or people wanting to come to what is still the best country in the world with the most opportunity in the world, um, you, you can't you can't pass a law and expect people to not want to follow that. I mean, it's just it's it's easy to say, oh, we're going to pass a law and ban them and round them up. It can't happen. It's like you can't you can't confiscate all the guns in this country, and and you can't you can't ban all the abortions in this country. How, how well it it, it doesn't drugs, work. How well did the war on drugs work? Who won it was the a war? Miserable failure. I, I, I don't. That's I why don't we're now that. getting into. That's why Pete Jansen's wears a a, a, <laughs> a shirt for a cannabis dispensary. You would have been. They would have rounded you up at one time. Silly silliness. I, I think lawmakers should have to. I, I, I penned an article on our, our buddy Julie Morris and that anything that she votes for, she should have some impact on, on the votes she says yes or, or no to. And these people from Venezuela, I think she should. Hey, you want homeless rights? Then bring them over. Put them right on your front lawn, Julie. See, 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 see how you feel about that. I got back to local here, gentlemen. Uh, shout out to Woodlands, uh, best girls private school. I saw that. Uh, 
Yeah. Lake Forest Academy all very well too. Um so uh I think Woodland's got a hundred girls there. Uh I that's where how... Barrett was before, right? Or am I my uh, my they're, they're located at the same location. Um uh or they were neighboring and now they've they taken over the most of the campus there. Uh Woodlands uh, is a um, high school, however, Barrett was a college. Right. It's a good uh, democratic factory over there. Uh <laughs> tongue in cheek. Uh NPR had an interesting show. Uh last, did. last, First one. last <laughs> week. Uh Prue Biddler <laughs> was on the show. Go figure. Well, I know. I guess she likes to talk to the uh, talk to the converted. Yeah, there's a lot of facts to be checked in that um, in that interview there. Here, that, uh, fact one: she's a liberal. It's a liberal show. Yeah, she yeah. she went Mom on that. Sh- Pete rhetoric. That's that's good rhetoric. But the reality is, I think she missed. There's. I've talked to a lot of people in town. Yeah, uh, since that show aired, and. Yeah. Um, she has she really misrepresented a lot of what happened uh in the uh mayoral slating well in order if you make, process in order to make yourself a victim you have to do that well it's perceptions and feelings i'm sure her feelings are hurt i'm sure her perception was she should have won okay i'm sure her perception is i'm from the dark side <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a mayor. Uh, there, there, there will be a female. There, there will be a female mayor of Lake Forest one day. It won't be Prue, but it won't be Prue Bidler. No, they're gonna they're gonna pick they're gonna pick the best candidate, and I'm confident that one day the best candidate will be a woman. But in this case, the best candidate was Randy Tat, and uh, that was clear throughout the process. Um, she went through that process three times with three different caucuses. And each time that caucus picked someone else uh, that they felt was more qualified. And you look at the last three mayors, uh, they've all done a really good job. And, you know, uh, I, I, you know, what I got through that whole interview, a number of things came out. And, and it's interesting that she, uh, we, we looked at her campaign donations since the mayoral election. Um, I don't care if and we listed it, you listed it in that article there, Pete. Uh, I don't care if she's giving money to Dick Durbin or to, to John Tester. I didn't even know who John Tester was. I had to Google him in uh, Montana. But he's a U.S. senator in, uh, I believe, Montana, a uh, Democratic U.S. senator. The one that gets me, the one contribution that gets me is she lost this election because of her support for um, these woke criminal justice policies of Kim Kim Fox mainly, but also Eric Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. She's doubled down. She just gave a thousand dollars a few weeks ago to Eric Reinhardt's reelection. So, so when she made that plea during the election, saying, you know, sometimes I get it wrong with my donations, and I uh, I support the police and all that, I say garbage to that. But more importantly, uh, listening to that whole interview, at no time in the interview did. Who give a compelling reason why she should be the mayor instead of Randy Tack? She didn't talk about any yeah, issue. she did, because she's a female. That's a reason. But, but she never said, oh, I'd run the city better, or oh, I'd do this better for the city, or that for the city. And that's why she lost, Pete, because people, people like how the city is being run, and they didn't want to go with a non-caucus candidate. Because they didn't want that change, and they felt very comfortable with Randy Tech. And I think if that election were held today, I think she'd do even worse. So, you know, these guys keep bringing themselves out there. They keep talking about um, uh, themselves. And a couple of people have said that um, we're the ones ending up giving them a platform by talking about them here. But the reality is... Well, people are talking got, about them. It's well, happening in town. It's what we talk it's 40, about. It's 40, you know what, though? It's 40% of the vote. OK, tell me, it, it, Ronald Reagan in his 1984 re-election landslide got 58 and got uh, got 58 percent of the vote. Yeah. So yeah. Randy yeah. Tack yeah. did better than 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 Ronald Reagan did in the landslide. So my point is, yes, is there a minority of, of residents uh, that uh, don't like the way the city is being run for whether it's who they select, but more importantly, the policy. To me, it's more important the public policy. All right. I want the best person in there. If that happens to be a woman, great. 
Um, you know, I, I like Nikki Haley, who's running for president. I think she's, uh, I'm really a big fan of hers. And yeah, I think she'd be a great president. My point is, it is looking at the issues. What are the issues that affect me and you and any man and woman that lives in Lake Forest that she should have been mayor instead of him? And and she she failed to make that argument in that interview. She didn't bring up one single issue that that the city is being run she, wrong she, 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 uh, that she would have done differently, and that's why um, she should have been mayor instead of Randy. Well, she, she never did that. It's all about her, and it's all about this supposed slight of women, which we've talked about this before. That's garbage because when you had a chance to elect the first woman governor of Illinois. Judy Bartopinka, who's about as liberal a Republican as you're ever going to find, you wrote a check to Rod Blagojevich, uh, who later wound up in jail. So anytime that Prue gives that women uh, speech about that, I, I'm reminding her, uh, people yeah. should remind yeah. her about how she really? slighted Judy Bartopinka, uh, that could have been a woman governor. She lost because she's shady. She gave a million bucks to the dark side. And you know what? <laughs> people don't trust that shady just like, like just like Joel. hillary people didn't trust her they did they don't trust prue you can have she's a great she's a, she's obviously a great fundraiser for them okay great and, 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 great. and the u lines and the U, a big a big donor for them and she uh, she hosts fundraisers at her house i found out from someone this week who lives near her that uh, uh she hosted a fundraiser the one time the secret service was in the neighborhood because she hosted a fundraiser for obama i don't know what at what point in it, but um, she, uh, you know what though, I, 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 and I said this, I've said this before. Uh, I think if Dick Uline ran for mayor, uh, the, the same issues would come up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think well, there's a place for there's a place for donors. Look, politics runs off of money, and uh, it would be naive for me as someone who's worked in politics to say there shouldn't be that money. All right, there absolutely should be that money to 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 run campaigns and get your message out. But my experience has been that. Big donors don't make good candidates, all right? They may be able to buy an election like J.B. Pritzker did um, and then uh, buy the off scenes, the other side, they, but they don't make good elected officials then uh, either. I mean, look, I, uh, Rauner was, a, uh, Rauner yeah, was yeah. a good moderate, but he had problems because he was used to being a donor and not yeah, an elected official. Yeah. And, and I just don't, th I, I think that the, the, the idea of writing a check to buy an election rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I mean, people, I've had a lot of people say to me, she spent $200,000 for a job that pays 10 bucks a year. What's up with that? You know, that that's just ridiculous. Hey, and the and other I, thing she's she's crying about, I mean, where's my, here, I'm drinking a cup of liberal tears right now. <laughs> she's crying about uh, people calling her names. Now, look, ever since there's been politics, there's been political satire. Am I right or wrong? Uh, yes, correct. Okay, yeah, it, it goes, stay, little, stay out of the kitchen. It's yeah. older than it's older than the United yeah. States. Well, and so, she she brought up her family being brought into it, and let's 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 look back at that. The reason yeah, her family from was, her. yeah, the reason her family was brought into it was because her daughter in law uh, got jobs from candidates that Prue had given money to. That whole pay pay to play Prue that I was the one that brought that up and then uh she and she to this date has never given an answer about that she she dodges the question by saying they they attack my family they attack me they're not attacking a family member that that didn't work for the government and didn't get a job from a politician that you wrote a check to and and, and it really accentuates the fact that it's a problem because the daughter-in-law is the inspector general in Chicago so any inspector general would be investigating if someone else got a job from because a relative of theirs gave a, a big campaign donation to the to the office holder, whether it was Kim Fox, whether it was Rahm Emanuel, whether it was Lori Lightfoot. Um, all of those people got checks and, and her daughter in law conveniently works for that office. Now, maybe she was hired on merit, but Prue never came out and said that. She never said, look, I had nothing to do with those donations. I, I gave those donations not knowing she was she was uh, going to work there or whatever. Yeah, no I'm answer. Sure. She's never addressed it. So anytime she does the woe is me, 
Oh, they're picking on my family. No, they're Pete's not picking a on bad your family. Man. He's bad. They're, they're, they're bringing up a legitimate public policy issue that pay to play in this state has been a horrible history. And oh. you're a part of it. I, I think I think someone could run successfully for mayor of Chicago saying we need change here in Chicago because there's oh, yeah. a lot of things going wrong in Chicago right now. You can't say that about Lake Forest. You can't run against the party in power and, yeah. and make the issue, oh, they slighted me three times. Lake oh, Forest they're not running bad, enough like, women. Yeah. Um, it's a great place to live. She, she is like, yet to like, give a compelling reason why she should be mayor. The other... Another thing, Pete, uh, two other takes I have out of that interview. Yeah. One, did you did you all catch at one point she says um, to uh, to Tim, uh, the uh, host, she, she says, thank you for giving me these questions ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a real interview there, yeah. Yeah, that's a real interview right there. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, she, she says at some point that she's not running again for mayor. He asked her and she answered it. So if she ever does run for mayor, we got it on tape. Yeah, yeah I, so I what? I can't tell you though. She I said she would support the caucus too when she was went through the process and then she reneged on that. So that's why people she'll never win anything because people don't trust her because she does stuff like that. Just follow the money. She's just people. gonna write checks, I think, at this point. Yeah. And let's see if the people that are the the 40 percent or so that, that that voted for her was less than 40 percent. Um are they gonna run a slate of candidates uh, for Alderman? Because it's a lot harder to find Aldermanic candidates than it is one candidate runs why, for mayor. Why, Are they going to try and take over the council and make Randy's uh, life miserable? And who's going to write the checks for yeah, all these people? Who knows? Two years. Uh, so there's going to be another election. Uh, there's elections yeah. coming up. There's yeah. elections every year in Lake Forest for city council of some sort. So uh, No, um, I, think, I think it's every two. Oh, well, we got, we got, we got four... Because of the vacancy in the second ward, uh, there's four seats coming up in 2024. We actually, it's very weird that we have elections the same time as the partisan primary uh, for uh, president. But uh, so when people go and vote in either the Republican or Democratic primary uh, in March for, for president. You think the municipal election schedule is going to be the same time as the general election? No, same time as the primary. As the primaries? Yeah, there's four seats up in March of 2024. Do you yep. think Prue is going to uh, take over for her crony, uh, Julie Morrison, and continue that liberal, female, woke, senatorial? I I, I suspect they'll find a uh, someone uh, else. No, Remember, no. that district is really... Um, there's a woman named Rotaring who's the mayor of Highland Park. Who do you think is going to do it? Okay. Nancy Rotaring has tried. Which, she ran which, for what? Which attorney. Which area has more votes, Highland Park or Lake Forest? Let me give and you she's a run point. for, um, she ran for attorney general and lost. She ran yes. for judge and lost. Yeah, but that um, was before. Now she's, now she's, uh, you now know, she's a celebrity player because player. of the unfortunate um, Correct. She's uh, no, thing she's that happened there. Player. So everybody knows who she is now. We'll uh, see. I mean, her term is up in 2026, I believe. So we'll we'll have to wait a few years to find out yeah. um, on there. But uh, Julie you know, Morrison has said uh, in the past, I think this was going to be her last term. So uh, I don't think there's going to yeah, I think that there will be a successor. In yeah, and Bob Morgan, sometimes the state rep moves up to be the state senator. So maybe Bob Morgan would. Who knows? We'll find we'll find out when that happens. That's a few years away. So I'm sure there's going to be jockeying. Within the Democratic Party, there are, there are two two reps for every Senate uh, district. Right. Uh, Bob Morgan is one. Um, I don't remember who the other is. He would the other two. one is uh, it's currently uh, Jonathan Carroll, but he's not running again. And uh, Carroll is uh, the Tracy Katz Mule, who's the Democratic Committee person for Northfield Township, is the uh, anointed candidate uh, there. But that's. Yeah, that's more of Northbrook and uh, so prove my uh, a, a box of oh, Lake Forest. I mean, that's just it. The Lake Forest is just a little thing at the very top of the you know this thing's the, the Senate district is this big. Lake Forest is this part of it. Yeah, I mean, Rick, when you ran for state rep against Morgan yeah. in 2018, you won Lake Forest, right? In I Lake, won Lake Bluff. Lake Bluff, yes. 
Uh, but got no, Lake, Island Park yeah. field, um, uh, and I barely you know, was able to scratch the surface of Northbrook. Uh, yeah, it was it was just uh, impossible to do. So, so I think if Lake Forest had its own district, like it did years ago with Corrine Wood as the state representative, who later became a lieutenant governor, you could have a Republican state rep because I think I think if you run a moderate Republican, if you run a, a Darren Bailey type Republican, oh yeah, it. but if you run. Uh, 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 one in the tradition of, you know, Rauner, Kirk, Topinka, those types of folks. Just, just run as a Democrat. That's all you have to do. Well, that's what they do now. Well, that's what they do. All you got to do. There's a lot of moderate, yeah, you know, Julie Morrison, you, you don't know the Morris. history. Your buddy Joseph Julie, is, is finding that out, I'm sure, right now. <laughs> now that he decided, oh, I don't want to be a Republican anymore. I want to be a Democrat. <laughs> I don't want to talk about him anymore. He's, he's, but Julie Morrison is... Um, Julie Morrison years ago was a Republican. I think she worked for John Porter, who was the Republican congressman, you know, before Kirk here. Um, and I think she she saw an opportunity and switched sides at some point. And she, I think she's been asked about it. And she says, I didn't leave the Republican Party. The Republican Party left me. And whatever. Okay. I, I've, I've had some um, I, I, I mean, some look, I'm, I'm pro-choice. I've been very clear of that on previous shows, but We've been running pro-life candidates for president since Ronald Reagan in 1980. So the idea that you suddenly felt the need to switch after all those years because of that issue is nonsense. You no, were just seeking political out opportunity. This, there was no chance to win as a Republican. So to close out the Prue Beidler issue, Prue, I'm sending you a box of embroidered Lake Forest podcast Kleenex. Please use at your discretion. We're so sorry. Um, th there you go. So going down the, the list of things, gentlemen, uh, Lake Forest Scouts, one again, I'm eating crow, tons of barbecue sauce on that crow. We've had a, uh, guest, uh, last couple of weeks, John Kerr, man, does he know a lot about scouts and he knows quite a bit about, uh, politics. I dare put the four of us together on a show but uh, he likes their uh, he likes their outlook for the playoffs. They're going to definitely make the playoffs. And uh, kudos to the coach. All the crap that I talked on him. Uh, that gets us back to the school board election. We did a I shouldn't say election, but the survey that we did. We did a uh, a poll, and it turned out sixty forty that people like the school board of the high school, gentlemen. You may speak now. Do you have any thoughts? Here. <laughs> unmute, unmute, Rick. Somebody muted you. There you go. I, I don't know. It must be the gods. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I voted for the, uh, for the, to endorse the current school board. I, you know, I think these are good uh, local people who are trying their best. Uh, it's not easy as volunteers going in. Man, if there is a thankless job in the world, it is the school board. Uh, and I, but I, I think they are doing their best with it. Uh, you know, I, I wish they were less um, uh, thin-skinned uh, about debating and hearing the issues, the things that like the parents' care group uh, has been raising. These are perfectly legitimate issues, um, but that doesn't mean that the school board's doing a bad job. Uh, I think we should be talking about it and should be discussed. Um, but on the other hand, the volunteers uh, who are currently serving on there, uh, I think, are, are, are sincere, uh, trying to do their best. Uh, and uh, in many ways, uh, you know, despite the problems that uh, you've had, Pete, with, um, uh, with the new superintendent, I think he's an improvement over the last superintendent. I think we've had a problem. Last superintendent didn't take a thousand bucks out of your wallet, did he? Oh, I oh, he took more than that. <laughs> Simka, he did very well out of the whole thing. His uh, his term here, uh, I think, was very profitable for him. Uh, much like uh, his predecessor, uh, Harry Griffith, uh, there's been a long series of superintendents who have left Lake Forest much wealthier than they came. The the turnout for the vote on the school board was a lot less than Montgomery. You know, Montgomery's got a sixty percent disapproval rate. And, you know, that was a, a big number. This school board was a smaller number. Uh, is 40% disapproval for a school board? Is that a good or bad thing? I don't know. Uh, just, I, I, my guess is it's probably a normal thing. It, it, 40, I mean, 
Drew Beidler got what, 38%? Oh, got so 40%. 40, 40%. Yeah. I mean, 40% is 40%. Right. And, and, and if you're part of that 40%, um, you certainly feel upset. But that means 60% is the other way, right? Yeah. So yeah. majority wins. 60% is a lot more than 40%. You know. Most politicians would kill to get sixty percent of the vote in an election. Oh, that's a that's a, that as you said earlier, that is a landslide. Uh, Ronald Reagan in eighty four, that was a landslide election. He got fifty eight percent. That's a ton. Okay, uh, that's I mean, that's the way these uh, the elections should work. Uh, you know, they they should not be decided seven thirty. They should be being decided uh, somewhere under the sixty forty break. Uh, if it is more than that, then it's not a real election. That well, the school board, I, the, I, I think they played a role with getting Montgomery. Uh, I, I think so. If you, if they you hire, no, no, they, they hired him. They, yeah, they hired him. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. All right, so we put that out there. It's totally scientific, guys. It's a hundred percent. You know, it's within a half a percent accuracy. Yeah, it's very uh, scientific poll. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, anytime you defeat an incumbent. Times. <laughs> Anytime you you defeat an incumbent, whether it's a, a, an actual incumbent or a, a slate or a party, um, it, it could be the city government, it could be the school board. There has to be a really compelling reason that will, people will march to the polls right. and vote them out. If you look yeah. at the history of incumbents who've lost elections, there was some huge burning issue or a series of issues um, that caused them lose there's got to be a, a, a good reason people have to be very upset about a particular lori lightfoot lost for a reason yeah yeah well speaking of losing uh then the next segment is uh chicago bears is justin fields a bust yet he's starting to look like it i gotta tell you you know the bears have never developed uh, a quarterback in, in their entire history and Bobby I, I Douglas. Jim McMahon on there uh, jim mcmahon came he was already very well trained at BYU was already successful. Uh, the the entire history. I mean, like look at Trubisky. I mean, we just saw this show. We saw this, this is a rerun. This is a rerun of the Trubisky disaster. He has better numbers in fields. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, the last the but last great still, quarterback that the Bears had was Sid Luckman. Yeah, right. Which which is before I never saw. <laughs> hey, look I at went to school, and I went to school with his grandkids. Yeah, I, 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 yeah exactly. I mean, like it's 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 just goofy. And, and you know the Bears have had such bad, you know, it's just it's an incompetent organization. I mean, that's just just time to face the best rats from the head. McCaskies yeah, need to sell the team. Shots from the head, and, and so, the head of the McCaskies. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sure they're very nice people. I, I know the Cubs are, are, they're all nice. are struggling they're now, but nice they're still person. a much better organization than the Bears. I wish I mean, can 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 the Ricketts family yeah. please buy the Bears, please, oh, please Mr. Ricketts. Please. Yeah. By the Bears. By the Bears. Please, please, please. You know, <laughs> we, we, you go down to, I go to Gallagher Way, go to the Cubs games, you know, I'm a season ticket holder. Uh, I go to Gallagher Way, which was a, before the Ricketts, that was an employee parking lot. It was it was a piece of gravel land right next in a in this tremendously successful kitchen. The, the, the Ricketts built this beautiful facility there, which is jammed with people. Kids running around, people, families having a great time. It's a it's a tremendous asset, uh, and, and previous to them, when the Tribune owned it, when the Wrigley's owned it, it was a gravel parking lot. It, it, it you know the, the Ricketts have been a great blessing, regardless of how people feel about their politics. Uh, they have been they've spent substantial money uh, invested in the Cubs, and it's been paying off. So I, I I'm 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 a pro Ricketts guy on that. I, I'm in on the Bears. I got to tell you, the Bears. You know, it, it's you see general manager after Mark Embry, Jerry Angelo, uh, Ryan Pace. You see guy after guy coming as the general manager is supposed to be in charge of the thing because the McCaskies, who own this this team forever, know nothing about their product. They know how uh, to make money. Product, what what happened with that defensive? And the professional is what awful. Hold on. Time what happened? Time. What happened with that de defensive coordinator? I don't think we're ever going to know. Uh, it's unfortunate. Oh, I. I, 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 I yeah, it'll be. I don't allegedly. know. You know, I, you know, uh, allegedly. I don't want to get into it because I, I, allegedly, 
Yeah, so let's, I think there is there's there is some stuff happening there that for this forensic. Yeah, I don't know internet <laughs> watching. You know, what, here's here's my take on that. The, the the Bears' problems were far greater than who the defensive coordinator is. Oh yeah, uh, he is he is he is number one. He is no longer the defensive coordinator. Number two. He's not a congressman. He's not a, 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 a an elected official. He was the defensive. He was he was an employee of a private business. Okay, the Bears are very public in their business, but they still are a privately owned business. So unless he committed a crime, which now sounds like he didn't really commit a crime, it was more of some type of HR violation, is the the latest r- report from ESPN. Um, See, I, I moved on from that. Um, he's he's was, a private he's a private citizen, right. and that process will play itself out. And I'm far more worried about who the owner of the Bears is than who the defensive coordinator is. Well, yeah, I mean, the problem is, but it's not just the, the owner. Well, the coach the hired him, Eberflus. The, the coach is is next, but you know how is Eberflus any different than Nagy? I you mean, know, like, I, they're 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 indistinguishable. The, the same people. Well, he doesn't give them. crazy speeches afterwards stuff. like Nagy did about this team's a winner. And, you know, Nagy gave some really, I don't know what, he must have been going to uh, oh, uh, been Epic epic Grow to get some stuff before uh, he, those press conferences. And I was like, dude, you just got your butt handed to you and you're like, everything's great. The world's wonderful. Nagy <laughs> enjoyed that Kansas City game almost as much as Taylor Swift did. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's now on a winning team. Man. Exactly. He came up. Are you kidding for Nagy? But he ain't Nagy no he ain't no Andy Reid. He, he, he ain't no Andy Reid. He got a promotion. Hey, from the Bears head coach to being the Chiefs uh, off, offensive coordinator. We of course got Trubisky instead. But it doesn't matter because if we had gotten Mahomes, Mahomes would have turned into Trubisky and Fields. That's well, the- and that's the question. My I have about Justin Fields is. Is the is it Justin Fields' fault or is it the Bears organization? Well, I think fault? it's the Bears organization's fault. Because I mean, Fields basically, you know, the day the day the, the whole team. Alan Williams thing went down, the bigger story should have been Fields basically threw his coaching staff under the bus. He later kind of walked it back, but he basically said, "Let me play," and he yeah. wants to play his way. How many good um, Ohio State quarterbacks do you know? Uh, 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 was it Manning? They, Wait, no, didn't Manning play? Uh, Manning's dad play there. At Ohio uh, State? Or did, no, no, he didn't play. No, I don't think so. No. no. All right. Well, while you guys are thinking know. about that, uh, just in case okay. I don't, I'm, I'm no one to cheer for Ohio State. Uh, I, you know, I, as uh, as a Michigan grad, uh, you know, <laughs> there's nobody we dislike more than Ohio State. But I felt bad for Fields when he got drafted. I feel bad for him now because the Bears are unable; and they have not have the skill set to be able to train a quarterback. And it's been proven time and time again. God, <laughs> you the list. Bob Ab- so Fields, Fields Bob goes Ab- to another team and becomes a superstar. Oh, yeah. No. They're really Quarter- pretty much destroyed by the time they leave here. Uh, Look, if, it, it, you know, like, you know like what? Whiskey. Hold on. If you're good, you're good. Okay. Just seriously, our, my guy Bobby well, Douglas, look at, look at the team that he had to work with and what he did. Okay. Threw a seventy-yard bomb with a broken wrist. Okay. Well, Jim McMahon said in an interview this past week he was in town to sing uh, "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" at the at the Wrigley Field, and he said in one of the interviews, Chicago has never protected its quarterbacks. And look, look at the hits he took. The Charles oh, Martin one, which is over the top. Well, his old line was pretty good. His yeah, but he's just saying he's just saying that the the, the organization never thought about the quarterback like other organizations did at this point. He's, he's right. Yeah, I think that's true. I, I completely agree. It's it, they've it, it's been amazing. They they really are more focused on the linebacker than they are on the quarterback. 46 D well because I think there's this image of the Bears being a great defensive team. And look the the team that won the Super Bowl back in 85 was, yeah, was probably the best defense ever. Yes, absolutely. So there is there is some truth to that. But you know, you need you need you can't win with one and not the other. You need both. You need yeah. a good defense, but you need a good offense. If you, then, if you have one and not the other, you're not going to be Rex a champion. Grossman, I mean, we saw that with Rex Grossman in the Super Bowl. Yeah, where's uh, he? Defense was was fine. The defense was good, but you know they couldn't advance the ball. Uh, you know, you look back at the last look at the last 160 games, the last 10 years. Uh, the Bears are in the category, and they are like the fourth worst team in the NFL over the last 10 years, along with the Jets, the Browns, 
uh, and Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, that is that is really the class that the Bears are in, not just this year or last year, but permanently. And until they uh, until the McCaskey sell the team, and I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I for many years I hoped that the estate taxes, which is you know one of the fields that I deal with all the time, uh, would force the sale of the team the way that the Wrigleys had to sell the Cubs back in the day. But I don't think that's true. Uh, the uh, McCaskies have had decades to plan for this. Uh, when you plan for it over a period of time, you can avoid or minimize the tax. I think they have succeeded in doing that. So that even when uh, Virginia McCaskey passes, God forbid, a uh, nice lady, I wish her any ill and anybody does, uh, but I don't think that's going to change. I don't think the, uh, uh, the family's going to sell the team then either. Uh, they were going to keep on going because that's, you know, they, they are genius. I've heard, as I've heard OB say on the Hampton OB show, uh, one of our competitors, uh, the, <laughs> I like to say that. <laughs> uh, as I hear him, I hear OB say, you know, the, the, they don't listen to anybody else. They're geniuses. They own an NFL team. They are geniuses by, 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 by fiat. The fact that they own an NFL team means they must be geniuses. And therefore, they don't have to listen to anybody else. They don't need to bring uh, all of the former Bears back in who had success and listen to them and maybe get some advice. Do you think they, if they ever did sell the Bears, to uh, that they would keep the practice facility here in Lake Forest or they'd move it? Because, like, the Bulls used to be in Deerfield. Now they're downtown. Yeah. Um, uh, by, yeah. So it would depend on whoever bought it. But frankly, the... one thing is going to get the uh, NFL. Well, two things. One is the concussions. Number two is antitrust. Can't wait till that uh, gets them both. No, oh, they tried that before with the USFL, and they got a three dollars. Uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna come. It's Donald gonna come. Trump. That's where he made his name. Was we have a belated happy birthday, guys? Who is our favorite alderman? Joe. Who I, Dr. Eric Gosharian is certainly one of the favorites. Uh, yeah. One of my favorites because he's one of my two aldermen. I like I like both my aldermen, Jim, uh, our Eric Gosharian and Jim Preschleck, both good guys. Uh, but yeah, we just saw on Facebook uh, that, uh, uh, you know, he's an orthodontist here in town and uh, he celebrated, I don't know what number birthday it is. I'm going to guess. I don't know, but those candles are melting fast. <laughs> but a really nice guy, um, obviously grew up here. Uh, uh, so he's, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, knows the great history of the, of the city, but very pragmatic, uh, you know, uh, half the kids in town get their braces from him and uh uh just a really nice guy uh lives near for, me for here, a democrat you know. he is he's you know he's he is like a, a joe manchin type democrat. i don't want to throw him under the bus with the democratic party here but um he uh he's, if, if every democrat was like era i might be a democrat but who knows <laughs> he's a good guy I, I would go back to the democratic party if uh, if they were all more like joe manchin and era yeah <laughs> And then, and boys, let's close out with October second. The next city uh, city council meeting. What what to expect? Oh, I don't know. Is, is the agenda been published yet? I, I forgive me that I didn't look. Uh, uh, I, think they're, I don't think that they're ready to deal with uh, the vagrant uh, issue yet. Uh, so I, I don't think we're going to see that uh, come up yet. Do Do you think uh, Julie Morrison will come in and speak on the issue? Uh, I would be utterly shocked. <laughs> Did she come on here? I mean, I sent her an email and she Screw, uh, hey, you never know replied. what? Screw them all. They're all at least hey, at least Prue responded to my email, but she Yeah, uh, that's a response. Yeah, I she said she's no. not coming on because you're the bad guy, Pete. Was, what what yeah, can I say? Like, I you know, it's if she the door is always open. Hey, you know, and I I heard I heard a rumor that somebody's going on the other podcast from uh Ooh. a certain group that, that's been on this show, Parents Care. You heard this? Oh yeah. Jeff, they should go on every platform that they can get on. I oh, guess it. Yeah, you know. they should be. Yeah. So, That's interesting. Well, we'll see. Hey, invite us on. We'll come on there. Hey, Tim, we'll come on your podcast. Pete, Pete, me, and Rick will come on. We'll do a joint podcast, and, and Pete will bring the joints. Familia. <laughs> I thought, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> from Iliad Cannabis. No, but ser seriously, I mean. Hey, I Jeff, and Pete, make sure you get the questions in advance. Here's the here's the problem though. 
everybody gets into these silos, whether it's yeah. national politics or local mm -hmm. politics, people yeah. get into these yeah. silos. Yes. And yeah, that's that's, that's for the only silo I ever want to be on be in is the one on 176 in Lake Bluff with the pizza, the pizza place. Yeah. I mean, ser seriously, the, we get into that, that is what's wrong with this country is when we stop talking to each other, that's that the show's over. Right. I mean, there was a time people could work across the aisle, work together. And I think the caucus still does that. Like I said, Air is a Democrat, as, as everybody knows, but he's a, a you know, he supported Randy Tack um, and not Prue Beidler. Uh, the caucus caucus pulls that together. But when people say, oh, uh, this that podcast is horrible. And then when that, that podcast invites you on as a guest to say whatever you want and you say, no, I'm not. Who's the problem? That's old hat. Yeah, Maybe. but I, I, will, I do think you unfortunately have a good point there, Joe, that uh, you know, at CNN versus Fox News, uh, you know, I, I talked to a friend of mine recently uh, who just listens to the Fox side uh, telling me all about how awful vaccines are. I, I mean, really, I mean, we're, we're, we're in favor of promoting disease now for political reasons. It's just, it's incomprehensible. But yes, the, the silos that we have fallen into um, are a major problem. And fortunately, this podcast is always going to reach across the silo. <laughs> we've Thank had Holly Kim. Show. We've had Anthony Vega. We've, uh, I mean, oh, Leon Rockingham show is not really political, but um, no. we've had yeah. Democrats on the podcast and we'll continue to have Democrats on the yes. podcast. We'll continue to have Republicans on the podcast. We'll continue to have people who aren't partisan one way or the other on the podcast. Oh, yeah. I guess yeah, we had yeah. Severino on, so he's a Democrat now. So we've had, there's another Democrat you can add to the list. I don't hey. want to talk about him. Hey, we get, no, you did it. Hey, look. Broke my own rule. <laughs> hey, look, we got years, we got years of crud doing this. We've never screwed anybody over. If people, so, I mean, they get that, upset, they, they get upset at your AI drawings. Oh, political satire, huh? Okay. I mean, like you said, they, they anybody that's an elected official in Chicago has been the subject of a political cartoon or, or nationally. I mean, that, what's his name? Scott Stantis. I don't know if he's still at the Tribune yep. or not. Everybody they cleared out of there. But I yep. mean, that's just, that goes with the territory. And you've done AI drawings of us, Pete. I don't care. Hey. I kind of I consider it a form of flattery. Right. I mean, they're they're acting like you know Donald Trump gets upset anytime anybody mocks him, like Saturday Night Live That's or anything a like that. Democrat. So they're they're acting spread. like Donald Trump. They Hold won't on. tolerate anybody Another mocking. Another cup him. of liberal tears. I'm washing it down. We'll <laughs> you're gonna get drunk today. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Speaking <laughs> of which, see you downtown. Let me to go enjoy dinner today. I gotta pick my wife up for uh, for brunch now. So. Uh, All right, boys. Great job. Smell you. All right. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fidus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, exceptional process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest owned Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. Are you looking for beer, wings, and swings in Lake Forest? Well, check out Duffer's Pub and their state-of-the-art golf simulators. This primo setup is the perfect place for your next corporate event. Yes, let your boss win. And of course, all the games will be on the TV and you'll never go hungry because the za and wings are scrumptious. 
Go to Duffer's Pub on Western Avenue now. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. Otto, John C., Helen, and Herrick. 